In First Corinthians chapter 15, I want to begin this morning with, in this most relevant chapter as we close out our week together in the Word of God. You know, I, I'm tempted just to read these verses this morning. They need very little uh, commentary. Um, they, they truly do uh, speak for themselves. Um, so I'm going to keep my comments brief this morning. Uh, but as we begin this morning in, in, in chapter 15, you know, considering the church at Corinth, where we've been, no, no doubt the church at Corinth had problems. Um, you know, by the way, like, like every local work, um, the church is made up of imperfect people. And when you get imperfect people together, working to death together, there's going to be issues. Um, if you've been around long enough, <laughs> you know that uh, to be the case. But, but what we've seen with Corinth is, is division. Uh, we, we've seen competition and rivalry and unwillingness to deal with unrepentant sin there in chapter 5. There, there were issues in the assembly. There was issues with the Lord's Supper. There were issues um, with spiritual gifts. But when we get over to chapter 15, after addressing all of these issues, um, Paul, I think, reminds them about what this is really all about, their foundation, what he had preached to them. I'm going to read the first 11 verses this morning. 1 Corinthians 15, look at the first one. Now, I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, and which also you stand, by which also you're saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance that I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and it was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. And that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, and after that he appeared to more than five hundred brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. And he appeared to James, to all the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. For I am the least of the apostles, and not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am. His grace toward me did not prove vain, but I labored even more than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believe. Now, let, let's stop there this morning. You know, one of the things that, that jumps off the page when I read this is this idea that the gospel changed Paul. Uh, Paul was the last of the apostles to, to witness Jesus. He was a persecutor, a zealous persecutor of the church, as you know. But his encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus had changed him. And, and Paul recognized that, that, that he was nothing apart from Jesus Christ. It humbled Paul. It changed him. You know, the gospel of Jesus Christ is to do just that. It humbles us. It changes us. Paul, Paul talks about the grace of God, how it worked in his life, and it, it led him to work hard. And grace does that. It instructs us. It compels us, as we can read about in Titus 2 at verse 11 starting. You know, Paul, in the first couple of verses of this text, he reminds them of the gospel he preached to them, the gospel they received, the, the one in which they, they stand, the idea of being of standing firm, the gospel why which they're being saved. But then there's that small two-letter, most important conditional word, if. Paul says, if you hold fast to that gospel, I preach to you. What did Paul preach? What were they standing in? What was saving them? Verse 3, for I delivered to you, Paul says, as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. This was a matter of prophecy, right? And that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. Again, a matter of prophecy. Prophecy. Jesus fulfilled a prophecy. Brethren, that's it. Survey the book of Acts. What did they preach? Christ crucified for our sins. Christ buried, Christ resurrected. That's what they preached. It's the message that, that changes the hearts of men and women. He preached Jesus. Jesus saves. You know, brethren, we get distracted sometimes. We, uh, oftentimes, with just superficial and, and carnal things that, that really mean nothing. Jesus is the answer. Justin, preach Jesus. Brothers and sisters in Christ, tell people about Jesus. Don't complicate it. 
Tell them that he died on the cross for their sins. Tell them that he arose from the grave on the third day, defeating death, ultimately ensuring our own resurrection from the grave one day. We're going to get to more of the specifics of that next week. Tell people about Jesus. He is the answer. Let's talk more about that next week. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father for your son, his willingness to come to this earth and die on the cross for our sins. Father, for his resurrection from the grave, proving once for all that he truly was the son of the living God, deity come in flesh. Father, we are so thankful for Jesus, his willingness to do this for us, to suffer for us, to die for our sins. Father, may that grace change us. May it motivate us to work in your kingdom for your glory. And Father, for the resurrection that ensures our own resurrection, with the knowledge, Father, that your son will return for us one day and deliver the faithful over to you for all eternity. Father, we recognize as sinners it's your son who made that possible. Your eternal plan. Out of love for us. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.